My name is Deputy Graff with the Clay County Sheriff's Office K-9 unit. My K-9 is K-9 Judge. He's a five-year-old German Shepherd. The dogs are trained as a protection dog for the handlers. That way if a suspect attacks a handler or the handler is having a suspect fighting with him while he's trying to detain him or place him under arrest. These dogs are actually trained to pick up four specific types of odors. Cocaine in its various forms, marijuana, methamphetamines, and heroin in its various forms. The dogs also are trained to pick up on human odor in a situation where a suspect has fled a scene or a suspect has run through a field and thrown a gun out. The dog can be placed in that field of high grass where it would take multiple officers multiple hours to find a gun and the dog would pick up that human odor from several feet away and follow it right back to the gun or whatever the item is that the suspect has thrown. The dogs are trained to pick up the freshest scent, human scent, and follow it along the freshest path, which means these dogs don't backtrack. Training of these dogs do vary depending on the schooling that you go to and if the dog is what they call green or if it's an experienced dog, a dog that has been on the force for some time. Judge and me, we were, went through eight weeks of training total up in North Carolina. Some dogs, it takes 10 weeks. Some dogs, if they show signs that they're not able to certify because the dog does not have the aptitude to pick up the training, then the dogs are canceled out of the program and the handler starts over with a new dog. When we get to them, then not only are, are the dogs trained, but we're trained to train the dogs. We actually do the training for the dogs, which teaches us how to maintain the dog's training when we're away from the school. When Judge goes home, he is a homebound dog. He, he lives with me, he hangs with the family, he uh, lives at the house. When I get ready for work, Judge knows what time it is. He sees me in my uniform. He perks up. He starts running circles in his kennel. Open the door, ask him, let's go to work. And the first thing he does is run over to the car door. Our sheriff's office, and like many sheriff's office, the dogs are kept at the house with the handlers. It increases the bond between the dog and the handler. That plus at any time I can be called out and have to get dressed and go to work with the dog right there at the house. I can deploy from my house to anywhere in the county without having to detour to a group kennel to pick up my dog, make sure he's all right. And it makes us a more effective and quicker responding team. The dogs don't look for narcotics. They don't look for people. In the dog's mind, they are looking for the reason that they know if I complete this task, I get my toy. Whether it be a tennis ball, a Kong, a rolled up towel, a rope, depending on the dog. Uh, when that dog looks for narcotics to alert to him, he knows if I smell this odor and I sit, I get my toy. And to these dogs, one of the things that they love more than anything in the world is to get that toy. And like I said, and the same applies for most bite work. That, that sleeve becomes a toy. They're not biting because they want to kill somebody. They're not biting because they want to hurt somebody. They're biting because they were trained, if I bite that arm, it's a toy and I'm allowed. Later on, as the dog ages and matures, he actually realizes, okay, I ain't biting him because that's a toy. I am biting him because that's my handler, that's my partner, that's my daddy, and he's going to hurt them. That's where the handler protection comes into. The dog actually with that bond becomes very possessive of the handler and would pretty much lay down his life or do whatever he needs to do to protect that handler. There are several ways that they determine when it's time for a dog to retire and give up its service. Uh, one of which is health. Health of the dog actually becomes a big factor. A lot of dogs are hit, prone to hip dysplasia, 
arthritis, bloat. These are all diseases, some genetic, some are situational, that can decrease the dog's, not only the dog's effectiveness in the field, but as also the operating cost to maintain that dog. Uh, if a dog breaks a leg, it'll heal. But if a dog's hip blows out, then it's unlikely the dog will heal to the point that will be an effective dog anymore. One of the other aspects of the dog's working age is the dog's will. They call them drive. The dog has got to have a drive to do what he wants. If the dog gets to the age that he's starting to lose attention and lose interest in playing with the toy, like I said earlier, that toy is the only reason he's doing his job. So when he loses attention on wanting to get that toy, he's going to be less effective because he ain't going to care if he finds the drugs to get the toy. He starts losing that drive to play, he gets, starts losing that drive to hunt, he starts losing the will to keep wanting to work. And at that point he becomes a less effective tool and it's time to retire out the dog and find a more effective canine. Our Sheriff's Office actually gives the handler the option to adopt the dog, which allows the handler to basically become, make the dog part of his family and no longer a working service canine. If the handler leaves the canine unit before the dog retires, then the dog is actually utilized again by give, being given another handler, going back to school to train the handler and train the dog to be with the handler because these dogs are trained specifically so that they will not break a command given by the handler. If I tell the dog to sit and somebody down the road goes, come here puppy, come here puppy, that dog's not gonna break its sit command because he knows my owner, my partner did not give me that command. Some of the biggest misconceptions is the fact that I can hide the smell of narcotics in a mason jar because they seal. I can hide it in a brick of coffee beans. I can conceal the smell by smoking a cigar while the dog's coming around. Uh, if I roll up all my windows, they won't be able to smell it outside of the vehicle. The dog's nose is actually about 10,000 times more sensitive than the human nose. Where a human smells stew, a dog smells stew, he, he smells, Plus he also smells the meat that was in the stew, the carrots, the onions, the tomatoes. They're able to smell every aspect of that stew. So when it comes to, okay, I'm gonna take five grams of weed and throw it in a pound of coffee beans, the dog, yes, the dog it will smell the coffee beans, but he's also going to smell the odor of the marijuana inside of the coffee beans. You could put in 30, Ziploc bags and you might not be able to smell it, but the dog still won't smell it. Another misconception that most people have are that when tracking, run through water, climb a tree, throw pepper on the ground, none of those work. The only way to beat a canine is not to do the crime and run.